Yes, over there. Oh yeah, move everyone move around as you as you like. Okay. So two types of milk. How many? Three. I bring four. We all can eat one. Ugh. I'm kidding. <laughs> Do you have a melancholy about not being seen as being different? <laughs> really? Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Any other one eights in the room? <laughs> Oh, That's me. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. What if I just have the bridge from one, but it's not connected to eight? You have just the one hanging. I have the one. Mm. What is that called? Uh, hanging gate. Yeah, when it doesn't connect. It's like a handshake. Where can I never be? Uh, I have a lot of hanging gates. Right? <laughs> you're at a grocery store and it's being shut, and you're like, but who is that person? Shall we start the session? All right. Thanks everyone for coming to Human Design Catalyst Year 4, Session mm, 6, 7, I don't know, <laughs> we keep forgetting to count them. Uh, today we're going to be talking about melancholy as it pertains to mutation and to individual circuitry. So whatever individual circuit channels you have in your body graph, that's what uh, I would like you to be aware of. We have some cheat sheets floating around, we've got a book here and a infographic on this monitor excuse me and um melancholy i thought was a perfect topic for one of these sessions because everyone everyone has a lot to learn about it people who know hd and people who don't know hd nobody is really talking it to the fullness that i would appreciate um it's i have had epiphany after epiphany about melancholy in my own life during the last few years before I got into HD, HD, of course, I would learn things from my melancholy as we all do. But when you're really aware of it, you get to, um, when you get to that position of awareness and the melancholy can come in and you know what to do about it, you really do get more and more nuggets from it every time. Because essentially, in a nutshell, what melancholy is doing is it is the body's affective chemical signal that you're currently <laughs> mutating. And so your energy, your calories, your attention is being reallocated into some inner process that is invisible to you. And human design tells us that there's not, you never get to see mutation. You see yourself before mutation and after mutation. But as for what's going on, that's always under the hood. That's always behind the curtain. And it can be so aggravating when you're used to being a certain way and you can't access that because the mood is so heavy, because the mood is so prohibitive. But if you accept the mood, then, then melancholy can teach you a lot. And um, so among these, all these like epiphanies and stuff I've had, um, one, one incident that stands out was uh, being at, just at a party here maybe a year or two ago, talking to someone, telling them about melancholy, and they were like, oh no. They are like, oh, you're melancholic? Oh, like, shut down, you know? Like, I, like maybe it's, I don't want to talk about this. This must be painful. This is, we just, we pretend it doesn't exist, right? Um, and I was like, that's the last thing melancholy wants. You know, melancholy, it doesn't want to be rushed. It doesn't want to be ignored. It certainly doesn't want to be thwarted. Because essentially what's happening is in that moment of imminent mutation, that mutation obviously seeks to be successful. And we'll get into this a little later, but the best way to ensure the success of the mutation is to match the mood is to do things that you're in the mood for. Um, and there's, so, there's an infinite amount of differentiation there. Individual circuitry is the crux of differentiation, is the crux of mutation. Um, and when you look at anybody's chart, regardless of whether there's individual circuitry there or not, um, we know that collective circuitry basically exists to support individual circuitry. Individual circuitry is creative evolution. It is the elaboration of life through form. So there's big picture version, like the whole process, the whole project of being on earth is essentially to get individual circuitry doing its thing, doing its elaboration of life through form. Um, okay, any questions so far? What happens if you have collective in your own chart? Is my collective helping me helping my own individual? I know the answer. Um, yeah, yeah, and and collective circuitry and tribal circuitry can be differentiated, but it's like that that differentiation is catalyzed by individual. You know, so it's like 
So it's like for if you've got like a tribal channel or a collective channel in the spleen, it's like that circuitry can only really change if an individual flow hits that spleen at some point, regardless of whether you carry it all the time or not. But if that individual chemistry hits the spleen through another person or through transit, then that mutative energy can then mutate the collective like infrastructural chemistry or the tribal protective chemistry. So a basic breakdown for new people between these three types of circuitry. Individuals, what changes, what mutates, whatever. Collective is what, um, what ensures things on a practical level. And uh, tribal circuitry is just what protects people day to day and establishes a continuity of culture, of form. Defensive circuitry, basically, is what tribal is. But if somebody has individual and collective... Mm -hmm. I'm not able to change my collective. Like, I can't be my own spark of individuality. No, you can I mean, you can. It's like, it, whatever's linked up is going to flow. So it's like, the, the, when we talk about circuits, what we're talking about is like a channel, maybe from the root to the spleen to the throat would be all the same circuit, even though it requires two channels. It's the 5818 and then the 4816. That's just an example, right? So that's all one circuit because it's the same type of circuitry passing through multiple centers. But if you had the 3828 and the 4816, you would still have root to spleen and then spleen to throat, and that energy would still travel. It just wouldn't, um, it, it wouldn't be um, a, a con continuity of the same idea. But that energy still gets to the spleen. It still powers the spleen. And in this example, that person is still a manifester because of the, the, that movement of the motor all the way to the throat through the spleen. So energy travels through the body graph with whatever pipe it can take, but there are certain pipes that are meant to participate with each other, basically. Mm -hmm. And it takes something flowing down that individual pipe to any center to mutate it. And once that center is mutated, then it can mutate the other types of pipes that bleed off of it. Anyway, very, very technical piece, yeah. What exactly do you mean by mutation? Mutation is, uh, so mutation is basically there being something different, you know? There were things that were realized in form um, and things that were not realized in form, and every day there are more things that are realized in form. Like all of a sudden there's the first chair like that, all of a sudden there's the first person with a certain whatever um, DNA structure, there's a person with the everything like cultural like mutation is interesting because it is cultural and it is physiological and as when we start to explore melancholy here um this is melancholy about the reconfiguration of the physical form and the reconfiguration of the psychology so both of these things are being changed during a during a time of mutation and again, it's like you kind of don't know what it is that's even being altered about yourself. And when we look at an individual's chart and see which individuality is uh, inherent to them, we can kind of get a clue in what realm that mutation is going to operate. But, I mean, and this is the part of the reason I wanted to do the lecture. It's like when you recognize the types of mutation that you're always carrying with you because you have individual definition there, then you know that that is just going to be periodic in your own life. You're always going to have mutation there. You're always going to have melancholy there. And it's never, it's never seasonal. It's never rhythmic. There's no rhyme or reason to when it shows up. Individual circuitry is fully, fully irrational. Sometimes it appears to be connected to something that happens in your life. Sometimes it seems like it came out of the blue. But it certainly doesn't operate on any sort of schedule, which is one of the many things that I'm going to mention that separates it from the emotional wave, because this is a question that comes up a lot. So people talk about if you're emotionally defined, you know what it's like to have your ups and your downs. Um, and if you're not emotionally defined, you still know what that's like because you're eating it from everybody all the time. <laughs> um, but the emotional wave moves, oscillates from this, uh, from this place of hope to this place of pain are two of the keynotes commonly given to it. But you could also term them as like optimism and fatalism, or you could term them as... Uh, anxiety and euphoria and creative energy and um and low energy depression but also calmness and what we'll see with both um the emotional wave and with melancholy is that when they're well regulated neither is inherently suffering so a low energy emotional state doesn't have to be depression it can very much be a sort of withdrawal of affective investment in life 
And if you're, if that comes at the right time, at the right place, if you're in your natural biorhythm, then that's perfectly comfortable. You like to just kind of not be interested in anything, put your feet up, get a little cozy, sit in the jacuzzi, whatever. You can really savor the down wave, savor the, for lack of a better word, pain. And when it does appear as pain, as suffering, it, that's still something to savor, but it's harder. It's, it's more threatening, you wanna run from it. When, when you catch it at the right time and the low wave doesn't appear as pain, it's easier to savor that disinterest and that like, uh, why bother, whatever. Um, whatever it is with the emotional wave, you can sink into it. And so melancholy is very different. Melancholy is not periodic. There's no regulation of a natural rhythm to it. It doesn't come and go like the waves, right? It strikes at a certain point. And keep in mind, there is one case of overlap here for people with either the channel 2212 or the 3955, that in that case, that is a melancholic channel that's also emotional. So if someone has either of those channels, then those things do operate in concert um, more for them. But for everyone else who's emotionally defined and happens to have melancholy in another place, then those things are typically unrelated. And as you begin to learn more about your own process, you'll be able to differentiate these things. You'll be able to notice, like, I'm in extreme melancholy right now, but I'm up on my wave in a well-regulated way. Or I'm very much not melancholic, but I'm super low in my wave and it's not regulated and I'm, um, and I'm fatalistic. And one of the distinctions that I like to make between these two states is fatalism and nihilism. Um, but you had a question? Um, yeah, just... Um... That was a lot, and, and, I, and I didn't get everything, but I looked down, I have 39, but mm -hmm. not the 55, but I have like cool. 39. So can you tell me what that means in relation to the wave and when I feel down? And Absolutely, yeah, and we'll, um, and we'll get into like as many specific channels as we can, as much as we have time for, too. Um, and I will point out to you that for the next like five months or something, because of Saturn, you have that whole channel by transit. And you're a projector, so you're not going to be experience tra experiencing transits as strongly as you're experiencing the auras of other people. So this is very much a background frequency. But still, Saturn in 55, you've got a hanging 39. You are going through a period of like, it started about a month, a month and a half ago. And you know, Saturn's very slow, so it's gonna be another few months. It's going to, even if you're alone, even if you're not seeing anyone, you will have these sudden melancholic moods and the theme of that channel very much is uh, about um, the imminence of love, the total lack of love, the imminence of spirit, and the absolute destitute despiritedness. So it's like immediacy, immediate love, immediate spirit, lack of love, lack of spirit. And um, it, the individual emotional wave is the type of emotional wave that will change on a dime and sustain its emotional note. So other types of I'm not sure how much you've um, explored all the other, uh, I know that you're undefined solar plexus, so um, I forget if it's come up in these other meetings or whatever, but like emotional waves have different shapes and there's some that will like kind of ride up and ride down and then the tribal one sort of like ratchets up and then down, but then this one is like spike and sustain and then spike and sustain, so it doesn't really flow like the other one. So you might feel like you have an affect out of nowhere and you're like, I'm in this mood and I don't know how to get out of it. Where is this going? Whatever. It's not going away for any reason. And again, there with that type of emotional wave, we see an extra, um, an extra level of irrationality. Individual circuitry is irrational in its own way. Emotional wave is irrational in a totally other way. It's irrational in the sense that it's just like a byproduct of nature and it's like this in breath, out breath, this like now is the time of year to produce fruit, now is the time of year to produce flowers, now is the time of the year to drop all my leaves, whatever. That's the wave. And we know that the mutation is much more periodic and much more random. Is the wave like a product of everybody else? Like does, does everyone contribute to the wave? Um, or do I just not understand wave? That's, this is the first time I've... I think wave has been brought up at one of these that I've been. Okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, right, right, right. We've mostly been talking about tone and stuff. 
Yeah, so the the nutshell with the wave is, so everyone is emotionally defined as a wave that comes and goes no matter what, that oscillates between those points of hope and pain, um, neither of which is inherently good or bad. Again, an up emotional state can be experienced as anxiety or euphoria. A down emotional state can be depression or a sort of calmness, tranquility. Um, And each uh, circuitry type of wave has its own um, its own shape and each individual's version of that wave has their own rhythm to that shape so and then in this case the general shape of that type of individual wave is just one where it like reaches a certain point and then sustains it and again because you're being activated by transit it's like that wave will be drowned out by someone or by anyone around you who is having their own wave intrinsically because again, you're absorbing aura more than you're absorbing, uh, absorbing transit. Okay, I got so much else to share. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, again, the goal of this, know your own individual channels and you can kind of know what is your inherent melancholy that's always gonna come in your life and it's actually a very welcome sign that you get an opportunity to mutate and knowing what is a melancholy that you're absorbing from someone else that maybe your system it may or may not be ready for right like because you could be with the right person who's mutating you in the right way at the right time and inspires a melancholy that's very healthy for you or you could have made some choices that aren't the best for you and being and eating the aura of someone who's melancholic and also has nothing to do with you right like you can be hanging with someone and that melancholy can feel so intense and so real and so important and so sweet. And you can be hanging with someone that you just kind of ended up sitting next to and you've been kind of out of it all day. And you're just like very, very pointlessly melancholic. Because when we're looking at human design, we're looking at energetics, we're often talking about them on the human level of absorbing people's vibes and stuff. That's just the easiest language for all of us to speak about this kind of stuff. But on another level, this is chemical, you know, it is, it, and what the aura is, is a field of sympathetic chemistry. And when, and when you're sitting next to someone, your body internally starts doing what their body is doing, just in terms of the production of amino acids and all this shit, right? And if your vehicle is taking you where you're supposed to go, which again, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying some really fundamental human design stuff just mixed in here. The whole point with human design is to make decisions from your body. Uh, that the mind is not meant to control or direct the life in any way. And so if your body is successfully making decisions, then it's like every person you run into, every person you talk to, every person you sit down next to is going to be saying the right things to you at the right time for the right mutations. And if you're not, if you're interfering with your body's process and saying like, oh, I don't know, I should show up to this because people are expecting me to do so even though I don't really have the energy for it right now and you go to it, you might end up having a conversation with someone uh, and locked into them in the case of being a projector like myself, mm-hmm. and they're mutating you in ways that you are not physically ready for. And as far as you know, these might be dead end mutations. Like these people might, because mutations aren't always successful. The goal is successful mutations. And the, and, and the uh, successful mutations are typically going to involve a lot of being antisocial. So if you're around someone who's melancholic and you don't know them very well, that's a little suspicious. You know, being on the other side of somebody else's mutation. Question? Just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that was a funny little sidebar I went down. So I want to talk about what the mutation is like from the person that's experiencing it. And again, strikes like lightning, comes out of nowhere, comes for no discernible reason, and how we handle that. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So we're talking about the defined channels or if we're in someone else's or completing that um, individual channel. Like if you're making it with someone else, like yeah. an electromagnetic. Right. That's an interesting case because it's like that. So ev- nothing in your design is a mistake, right? So when you have half a channel, it's like you are meant to provide a dormant capacity that's brought out once in a while. And so, and if it is a true electromagnetic, it means that the other person also has half. They don't have the whole thing. They have half, you have half. It's activated together. When that's the case, it's like you're both doing the thing that you're supposed to do. It's like you're co-creating a mutation. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you, um, 
whatever's undefined in your chart, you're here to see and you're here to observe. And whatever is defined in your chart, you're here to produce in your aura. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to try to do it. You're just doing it anyway. And so with any electromagnetic, it's good to know what you're bringing to that connection. Because any type of electromagnetic is going to be a lot of chemistry. It's going to be very fascinating. It's going to be very exciting to be in aura contact with such a person. Um, and it's very easy, especially in certain cases, like for instance, someone there's a simple split and they're in an electromagnetic with someone who bridges their split. Very, very easy in that case to be lost in the sauce, to not know where you end and the other person begins. To think that the whole mutation is you. When really you're bringing part of it, you're helping catalyze it. Let me see. Together. Excuse me, together. Yeah, thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Um, okay, so what happens? What happens when you're melancholy? Uh, oh, I actually, no. First, I wanted to differentiate a little more between like low wave and melancholy, just like to for those people that do experience both regularly to like know when, when it's one and not the other. Um, so low wave, lack of interest in stuff, um, not engaged, not enthusiastic, low energy, whatever um melancholic you could be very high energy and melancholic you could feel a ten tense energy you could feel like you have all this energy to spend and nowhere to put it because basically low wave is m more or less in the mood for nothing in the sense that it's less interested in everything no matter how appealing it normally is it's just a little less invested in anything that's going on whether it normally cares about it a little or normally cares about it a lot less interested melancholy is extremely selectively interested so it's not across the board lack of interest it's a super super narrowing of interest and certain things really really slap when you're melancholic and other things are just more excruciating than you could ever imagine them to be the things that could normally light you up could just be like unbearable you know whether that's music or a certain environment or a certain person but usually it's more specific things like a certain person's tone of voice or a certain element of the music you're listening to or a certain way the light is hitting one object in the environment. Melancholy is all about irritation. Things really getting under your skin. It's about being really moody, really discernment. And there are correct and incorrect answers to questions of resonance with that mood. Whereas a low energy emotional state is just sort of doled everywhere. Is that good for now? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so when you are in one of these extremely selective moods, when the mood, when the mood is happening, you know you're moody, you know that things are bugging you that normally don't, you might, um, you might be more taken with super specific things that seem to come out of nowhere, like like, why do I want to go to this bar that I hate? You know, like, what's up with that? Like, why, like, why do I have a craving to eat this food that I normally don't give two shits about? This kind of stuff, right? Um, basically, again, the mutation wants to be successful. So it's trying to match material with itself. And again, it's irrational. There's no, like, um, there's no explanation of why the mood wants... Um, an ocean view or why it wants to eat pickles or why it wants to dig a big hole or why it wants to listen to Celine Dion or whatever like the it's an elaboration of the vibe you know what I mean and no matter how much culture no matter how much language you apply to like justify that link it's that's just the mind the body is like this tone of voice this flavor this whatever it's like just hit me with that stuff you know, and the mind has all these conceptions about what it means to want to eat a pickle or want to listen to Celine Dion or want to take a walk in the forest or whatever. You know what I mean? We romanticize the walk in the forest. We think digging a hole is pointless. We think uh, making art when you're in a mood is very beautiful and honorable and la la la. We think doing the dishes when you're in a mood is de is defeated and just like stupid chore. You know what I mean? Like the like everyone has different you know preconceptions about what all of these like mood cravings are, but you're not supposed to explain them. You are literally just supposed to listen to the mood as much as you can without any sort of rationalization, and then do only what you're in the mood for. And if you do have thirty nine fifty five or twenty two twelve, we know that that means your emotional authority, which we. In which case, we know that doing what you're in the mood for is also your only rule in life. 
So just a heads up. There's also the case of people that are splenic authority that might be defined by 3828, in which case the same rule applies, but gets more, you know, nitty gritty as we get into other authorities. But if you have the 3955 or the 2212, obeying your mood is the only thing you have to do. The only thing you have to do. For everyone else, you know, when you get in a mood, you the best thing you can do for yourself is to follow it, is to do the things that you're in the mood for. That's the best way to make sure that the mutation is successful. That's the best way for the melancholy to not become suffering. Because that's what everyone thinks melancholy is. Not everyone, but that is typically a very, very common conception of what melancholy is. Uh, and so there are some uh, features of melancholy that are pretty universal across channels. So we're going to break down like all the melancholy channels, like whatever, whatever people have here, or we can get into some of the other ones too. But generally there's a theme of irritation. There's a theme of boredom and we see certain themes concentrated in more channels. Like boredom is a specific keynote for the 63, for example, but it's also pretty universal throughout melancholy that there's a boredom that there's a waiting for something to happen, waiting for the wind to blow, waiting for there to be something different. Because again, this is a withdrawal of creative mutative energy towards the inner process, which you don't even get to see or participate in consciously. And so it can seem like all the things that normally light you up no longer do. Um, another universal theme is acoustic sensitivity, specifically. We see other types of sensory sensitivity sometimes, but individual circuitry is very, very attached to acoustics. So if, if sounds are bugging you, if people's tones of voice are bugging you, whatever, then you know that you're probably melancholic. Um, would you say, especially if the music that you otherwise go to is just grating? Yeah, that's yeah. a huge sign of melancholy. Ooh. Sorry, that's happening right now. Really? Me. Yeah, cool. I'm like nice. changing up my whole music right now. Like, everything I usually listen to, I cannot listen to. <laughs> Perfect. So here's where I'm at with melancholy. I'm so melancholy pilled that now something like that happens to me. I'm like, yes. I'm not, I'm not, but not really because that enthusiasm isn't there in the moment because I'm melancholic. But on some level, my little witnessing mind is like, oh, something's about to be different. Okay. It's like a secret private anticipation of, wait, of what awaits you on the other side of the mutation, you know? And as long as you don't resist it, it's not suffering. Yep. And, and so here's some, here's some don'ts for melancholy. So the, the do is follow your mood, no matter how rational it is. All the don'ts are like, you know, um, don't put yourself in situations where people are attempting to get you to be some other way. Another universal melancholic theme is antisocialness. And that's another thing that can separate it from low wave. Like you could be low wave and kind of not that interested in anything, but still want to be around people. Melancholy, there might be a couple people you can think of that you really want to be around, but for the most part, you're like, ooh, you know? Um, and it makes sense just again on like a common sense mundane level that if you're in a mood and you go to work and someone is expecting you to be a certain way because that's how you are at work and you're in a mood, of course that's going to suck, you know? Like, of course, like, it sucks because you are not, a, you're arresting the mutation. You're not letting yourself mm -hmm. unfold this new dimension of yourself that's trying to birth itself, right? So it, anytime, anytime someone is trying to, don't, get, don't try and get yourself out of melancholy and don't abide anyone who's trying to get you out of melancholy. Another thing that I noticed is due to the, uh, the lack of interest in things that normally interest you, you might have a really difficult time talking to people. Another common symptom of any type of melancholy, regardless of channel, is that, um, is that things will seem fake. Individual circuitry is all concerned about realness. Um, this was actually some uh, framework I was going to give early in the thing um, just to put this relationship between what the individual is in the context of melancholy. Um, so this is the individual circuit, so it's uniquely you, right? It's uniquely personal. Um, it's so deeply personal that it, that it uh, kind of hits this in antiadromia effect and becomes absolutely archetypal, absolutely universal through the extreme personalness of it. 
And uh, a quote I keep coming back to a lot when I have these kinds of conversations is, um, is Jung's quote about how the individual is the only carrier of life, that life only ever happens to the individual, which if you just break it down rationally is very true. Like we could all, like you're all listening to me talk right now, but you're all completely having your own experiences, right? We could all observe the same event, but ev what everyone's taking in is totally unique to them. There is no shared experience really. And that gets into some difficult linguistic territory because we know that there's a whole classification of circuitry and human design that's about the sharing of experience. But that sharing is essentially a compromise for the sake of communicability in that same way that collective infrastructure supports the blood of the individual. Like the point of being alive is to have this mutate, to have this differentiation through the individual. You're baking something in your own bodies that no one else has seen before, right? <laughs> All of us are. All of us are doing this, these things to our depths of our psyches and to our DNA and all this stuff, right? Um, where did, what did I sidetrack from again? <laughs> <laughs> this is great, though. Just keep going. Just keep going. No, no, no. no. There, there was some, no, there was something important in there. The, the, We're talking the about don'ts. Malik, don'ts and Malik. Yeah. The don'ts, don'ts. yeah, don'ts. yeah. Huh? Oh, I said, well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so don't expect yourself to be different. Don't make yourself be different. Don't, don't explain it is a huge one, right? You don't want to attribute the mood to something that's happened or anything, whatever. Um, we know, yeah, we know that the, that the um, complement of explaining is the elaboration thing, and the best version of elaboration is just to do what you're in the mood for, right? Regardless of trying to find the link. Um... And finally, I guess the, the, the primary don't is don't ask it to hurry up, which a lot of people do. A lot of people are like, I wish I could just snap out of it and show up to work or like, I've got this thing I've been looking forward to tonight and I'm in a mood. Damn, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> you want to get out of it at certain points. Um, but that's the one of the worst things you can do for it, you know, because that, that's gar a guaranteed arresting of the of the mutation yeah so what i've learned about solar plexus is there can be like eating can be connected to um solar plexus plexus act activations mm -hmm. is there eating like soothing through eating accompanied with um with melancholic or individuality individual circuitry is very much wired to want carbs <laughs> just so it does it's whatever whatever carbs are we think of carbs as being kind of like heavy and a lot and not con but not containing a lot of nutritional content or whatever so that's an interesting connection certainly the two channels i mentioned that are both emotional and individual have very strong relationships to eating the 3955 in particular is super associated with eating disorders and um and uh substance abuse substance addictions stuff like that very 3955 stuff it's all the also the future we're entering into by the way 3955 is a big big part of the global cycle post 2027 um when we can get, i've got like i have a ton of comments on that channel in particular but as we start to like break up the individual like types of melancholy and stuff it might be good to start with what people in the room have just in case it's useful to their lives or the three of us have 4323. All right. That's a common channel. I don't know what you have over there, dear. I have 1020 and 81. Nice. Yeah. Lovely. Eight ones in a room. <laughs> I have this 55. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. So we're in your order together. You have that whole channel. I've also got the hanging 39. So you complete that for me. And then I'm also sharing with you this prolonged Saturn activation of that channel. Mm. Um, yeah, so let's start with the 4323, especially because that's one of the most common channels. This is one of the few, one of only three channels in the entire body graph that's made by an opposition. So there's way, way more people that have that channel than most channels. And so each channel has a different kind of melancholy. Um, 4323 can be very much preoccupied with, um, with there not being any ideas that are stimulating enough. It can be preoccupied with melancholy about um, the impossibility of reform, um, the impossibility of people doing anything different. That 
actually dovetails into another just universal melancholic thing that that longing for difference that longing for something new but because this is an ajna throat channel it's very much in the realm of ideas this is also an extremely notorious channel for um for its uh, the difficulty it has um with waiting to be invited because regardless of type, to some degree, the 4323 and all its genius insights, like someone has to like let that in, you know, someone has to hold space. Any 4323 is familiar with like having this epiphany and wanting to share it uninvited and their words just seem to crumble right out of their mouths and it goes nowhere. And they also have that experience of totally blowing people's minds when someone is so ready to hear them, so ready to take their mutation, essentially, mm. right? And then they change that person's life forever through structuring something for the first time. And so there can be melancholy about no one is ready for this new idea that I have, right? It's hopeless. Like no one is ever gonna like, like they're like this idea is never gonna get to come into being because nobody's inviting me, whatever. Like it's very, it's a very reforming channel. It's like they say that 4323, as long as they are legitimately authentically engaged in any industry, it doesn't matter what it is, they can change it forever. You know, they could be like uh, working on seatbelts. They could be working on existential philosophy. They could be working on gardening. You know, it doesn't matter. The 4323 knows how to catch the glimpse of how it could be done radically different and radically better. But then everybody else is saying, well, we've done it this way for sometimes a few years, sometimes centuries, right? We don't want to hear this. Uh, any other channels people want to talk about? I also have this cheat sheet that breaks down some of the uh, melancholies. Actually, let's see what they say about 4323 while we're at it. Quick question. Yeah. What is it when you have like a perp, like purple, like what, my 6447? What yeah, are the so different that's, colors? Oh, one's consciously defined and one's unconsciously defined. So your body versus your mind. And which, oh. one, which one's which? I don't know purple versus, mine is black and red. Can I see? It's yeah. like whatever matches the... Um, so the darker one is conscious. Okay. Yeah. So that's um, in the collective stream. So this is another great keynote to the 4323. On the 23 side, especially, um, melancholy over not being able to explain oneself clearly, which is similar yes. to the whole words falling away from you thing. Oh, and a melancholy over inefficiency on the 43 side. So, that might be where you said seeing a way that can make it better. Exactly. And, and not being received. Right, yeah. right. I've had that where somebody will ask me a question, but it's not quite baked yet. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 and it's not effective at all. And then I feel even worse. Such a good analogy. And, yeah. and so you guys with that channel, you've lived with it and you're used to these melancholies. You're used to that need to reform something and not being invited. You're used to that annoyance at the inefficiency of things or the not being able to explain yourself to be able to actually substantially improve things. You're used to it. If you ever have this activated by transit, you, uh, the rest of you, you guys don't have it defined on the occasion that you do, like that's when you really got to tolerate the melancholy, right? Because you're not used to it coming and going. You haven't seen that there's another side there, right? So, and that's true about everything that's defined in a person's chart. If you have it defined, you've, it's very clear with emotional channels, obviously, because of the way that they operate, of the coming and going. But any channel like comes into play sometimes and then it doesn't. Like, um, like 3828, a splenic channel. Like this is the channel of the people with the most suicidal ideation. Not that many suicide attempts. The people that have the suicide attempts have half that channel and then occasionally they're the most prone to having the whole channel activated by transit or by another person. These are the people that are not used to suicidal ideation and then they get it and it hits them like a lightning rod and they are the ones that actually make the attempts. You know, and just like as an, as a, um, whatever, a metonym for like how that operates in any sort of definition. It's like, you've got it. Like, it's always going to be a part of your life. You get to see it happen or not. But if you're not used to the 4323, you're not used to having this great insightful epiphany about how things can be made better. And then all of a sudden you do because you're hanging around someone who does or because of a transit 
then it might be even harder for you to not offer your brilliance, right? <laughs> because it's not actually yours. You're not supposed to offer it, right? And you, even more imperative that you wait out the melancholy and see what awaits you on the other side of it. This feels a little off topic, but at last year's conference, it was so striking to me when 4323 was in the transit mm -hmm. and then it dropped. Mm -hmm. It was like our schedule was like so my jam. Oh. And then it dropped out of the transit, and I was like, where'd everybody go? It was like, the nodes, yeah. right? Yeah, the middle ships. Yeah, yeah that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was really crazy. We went to the plaza to see it in real time. So a bunch of us did. We went down to the plaza at the moment that the nodes changed. Very noticeable. Yeah, and all the... Really? Oh, yeah. Wait, go on. What? I don't want to derail it maybe after. And it's pretty interesting. I mean, so some of my big take takeaways and just the immediate. So there was, like, a festival going on that day. There was, like... Some local arts, whatever, platforming. There was like a band up on the stage in the plaza and everything. And a guy came up that, what's up? Nothing, go ahead. Um, a guy was in there talking about, uh, talking about like doing a sort of analysis of local art, very 4323. Like, I'm structuring what's going on, I'm telling you conceptually what, what's happening here. And he was still speaking what, at the exact moment the nodes shift shifted and at that time he s all of a sudden started talking about where we've come from and where we're going the nodes moved into directional channels in the g center the nodes moved into channels that were not analyzing things they were giving people direction and famously this the the one in particular is a gate that uh that birds that birds have and all of a sudden people were giggling and chirping and laughing because at, right at that moment, right at the plaza, like when you're around that many people during a node, like you get to see this very flat, clear, yes. homogenous version. It was, everybody cool. was talking, and <laughs> yeah. then all of a sudden it got quiet, like right after the node shift. And then everyone was like, hee hee hee, and they were less in their heads, you know, because that's the other thing about the, the nodes that we shifted out from, again, because this is one of these rare channels that's formed by an opposition, it's like a guaranteed definition for people. You know, so it's like everyone had to find Ajna for like the last two and a half months before that transition happened. And then all of a sudden they didn't. And it's like, whew, their minds just relaxed. And then they were giggling and then they were being creative and bird-like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was nice. Well, um, this I think this is full, open, like let's talk about any channel someone has time, I think. Cause, so does everyone kind of understand the basic thing? It's like when you do have melancholy, it's like the best thing you can do is just lean into your mood and just do things you're in the mood for. And, and I mean, again, it's like I started with that story about someone being like so freaked out by the idea of being melancholic because that was just like a really concentrated version of how society approaches this topic at large where it's just like oh you're not productive in the way that you normally are mm -hmm. like whether that's productive in the sense of showing up to your job or just in the productive of being like socially valuable or whatever no you're antisocial. you're you're withdrawn you're doing something else you're doing something invisible interior and that's going to be a down the road that's going to be of much greater value than trying to get yourself out of it and the thing is if you find the thing that hits if you if you find the music that really slaps more than it should if you find the like whatever one patio where the sunlight is just really hitting or whatever like you don't mind the melancholy whatsoever that's when it becomes this romantic melancholy that you hear about where it's like this person's making art or staring at the sea or just like relishing their mood and they're like whoa you know all poetic and shit right like these we hear these stories about melancholy too and every melancholy can be that ish right because every melancholy is also going to be different because what the melancholy is is introducing novelty through mutation so again it's like you have a melancholy channel you experience your whole life every time you have a melancholy it's going to be a little different and you can familiarize yourself to like that category of melancholy, but you know, you have a 4323 episode one day and you have it again a few months later, you know, it's going to be different those two times because what's being changed is being changed for the first time. That's really neat. And if no one else has a question, I have one. Um, can you talk a little bit more about 
only having hanging gates and the implication of that in your own and your individual challenge uh, channels. Sure. Yeah. So it's like you don't have any individual definition. It's just like there's no melancholy that you are obligated to undergo ever. So you have individual circuitry there. You have to have melancholic episodes because part of what you're here to do is to mutate that capacity for yourself and for all humans. You don't have it. You are and you have a hanging gate. Then, then it's then it's like what you're here to do is to be a witness to that part of that mutation. And that's why it's so important with a hanging gate and with an electromagnetic to know what it is that you're bringing to the mutation and what the other person is bringing. Beautiful, also there. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> but you know, it's like the only real obligations we have in life are where we're defined. Yeah. You know, everything else is kind of a bonus. Everything else is like this extracurricular class. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It could kind of be like you know coming to the Thanksgiving dinner and you're always bringing the turkey. Like that's what you're bringing to right. the mutation right. based on whatever the right. things are. Yeah, and then this is this well, is good. This is taking off through the themes. <laughs> yeah, thirty nine fifty five shit. Were you gonna say something? Um, yeah. Can you tell me about the ten twenty? Yeah, that's a great one. Mm. So the ten twenty, that's just a really interesting channel too, because it's the terminal point of the Mystic Way. Yeah. And, and it's uh <laughs> I have a lot. I have a lot of personal interest in this channel. I think it's really fascinating. Um, so weirdly, this is the channel that bugs can have. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? That's right. Sure that. That's me. <laughs> well, plants too. Right? Huh? Plants. Too no. Plant, plants don't even have a throat. They have no face. They have no voice. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> they yeah they can have a ten. They can yeah. have a ten. Yeah. So um, what is a bug doing? What does a bug ever do, right? Well, I'm thinking of pollinators, but that's not all bugs. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> that's such that's an objective. All a bug a bug really knows that it's doing is whatever it's doing in the moment. Uh... Like it's it's there. <laughs> it's I'm on this leaf. I'm over here now. I'm touching down. I'm taking off. I'm like you know what I mean. <laughs> bug <laughs> bug has no idea. Bug <laughs> there's no awareness in this channel. Like, there's su something of a sense and sensibility in the G-Center. There's, like, a cohesion to the experience of being embodied. That's where that's nested. But there's no awareness. There's no, like, discerning there. There's just being... So, in the case of 10 and 20 specifically, there's... 10 is the gate of behavior. It's, it's self-love and it's loving yourself. And 20 is the moment. So, it's really just being yourself in the moment. Being from a bug level, probably little more than a rock, almost like being a point in space at any given moment, operating the way that you're wired to operate as a bug. And in a human, there's all this other stuff layered on top of it. It's not, you do, You have all this receptive, regardless of definition, even if someone was just the 1020, obviously they're not a bug. They got a bunch of other shit going on oh, through their openness. They're absorbing life through all these levels. But what they're doing in a fixed and differentiated way, and the more they live as themselves, the more this becomes differentiated, is they're aware of who they are, where they're going in the moment. Um, well, I oh, use the word aware though. It's basically, no, it's like a cohesion, a coherence of who you are and where you're going in the moment, and a sort of like, um, almost like peacefulness, like, um, again, like, yeah, like sensibility. So the, um, they call it the channel of awakeness or the channel of awakening or something like that because what it does is it is awake in the moment. It doesn't know it's awake. It doesn't know it's being itself, you know? And it's like, there's all kinds of way, like in your case, you do have other awareness centers. So you, you have like, you've got, um, you've got Ajna and solar plexus. The one that connects directly to this channel is actually the spleen. So the spleen that directly observes self-conduct in the moment the the um validity of being yourself in the moment the like whatever recognition that that's happening is only splenic which is also very instant and which is also very um bodily and just sensed so when the mind or the solar plexus uh approaches this idea of being yourself in the moment it's doing it through um a, a further out sort of like filtration of that happening Anyway, all this context to say that essentially what that channel is melancholic about is like, first of all, whether people can behave themselves and also um, whether things are good enough right now. Gate, gate of the now is just like, 
like is there like is there any presence is there any real presence here is anybody re- being really em- embodied people with this channel will come to any event they'll come to a party and they'll notice who's having their story at this party and who is essentially furniture at this party because <laughs> we're all the main character of our own lives but there are certain things we show up to where we're a little auxiliary 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 right so like, like who the spotlight is on not even necessarily because someone could be having that night someone could be really taking in that uh, night and people not even pay attention to them or whatever okay. it's just like like here's a party there's 50 people at it for whom is this a part of their story like, charlie who's knows gonna remember it who's gonna remember 10, it who's, 20 knows. who's like is who, that what you're saying 10 20 knows yep. yeah to anyone with 10 20 knows they see not only who's awake generally like who's just woken up to reality blah 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 but also who's awake in the setting at this time whatever who's here for a reason mm-hmm. um do you track that it's so interesting does mm-hmm. that resonate for you mm-hmm. yeah and the other thing that they can do is wake people up but again, no awareness necessarily involved. So Charlie can't decide to wake somebody up or like it doesn't probably realize when she's waking people up. Like it just will happen. Occasionally at 1020, we'll just like kind of tap you and you'll be like, oh, reality. Whoa. You know what I mean? <laughs> it will just happen. Um, I guess that's a wrap on that. Maybe more about melancholy, I guess. Well, did I answer your question? People behaving themselves. Yeah, yeah. People, people, people misbehaving. Yeah. yeah. So it's an interesting <laughs> channel. Be, it's an interesting channel because the two gates involved in it can be connected a bunch of ways. So it's like Charlie's got the ten twenty. Someone else could have the ten thirty four or the ten fifty seven, and all of those are going to have melancholy about people behaving, but like in different ways. Can, can I ask her a question? Yeah. What does that mean to you? I mean, some people are <laughs> when people just don't know how to like. You know, they just don't have any composure. They're not paying attention if they're talking too much or, like, you know, they're making other people uncomfortable and they're just, like, really clueless about it. Yeah, that really gets on my nerves. Ten is a really interesting gate, too, because it's also the template of profile. Um, so if you are a profile, like, say, you're a four, six or something, but then you have gate 10, line 5, you're also a fifth line in some sense. And the behavior that you're assessing people on or whatever is like fifth line behavior to some degree. So each line of 10 will have like its different kind of code of conduct. Interesting. Do you know yours? Do you know your line for 10? Um, I don't know what that means. I'm a 3-5. You're a 3-5 generally. Yeah, we would want to know what your 10 is in. It'll be on your chart. I can look. Yeah. I'm a 10.5. 10 what? I'm a 10.5. What is it? Can I take it? Four. Cool. What is that? So you're an honorary fourth line. Is it conscious or unconscious? Conscious. So that that also like underscores what you're just saying because that's the social oh, line. Right. So that for you the behavior is very social. It's very much how you're treating others, very much how you're externalizing. And basically what you're upholding yourself and others to is a code of conduct about like responsible networking keeping the social hygiene going in a mm. community or in a, or even in a setting mm. with strangers on the bus, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So if you were a three, five with like 10, mm-hmm. six, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. way that you would assess what is behaving mm-hmm. or not would be very, very different. It would be like, how much are these people being true to themselves? Not how much are they being socially? That's so interesting. And, it, and it's true. That's just her explanation. I said, what does that mean to you? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, 10, four, 10, four. <laughs> <laughs> what about one eight? One eight? Oh yeah, we got at least two one eights in this room. Mm-hmm. Anybody it's else? It's in the transits right now too. Is it? The eight cool. is. Lovely. I got one. Oh, cool. yeah. A lot of millennials have a hanging one. Pluto was there for a long time. It's a one. I have a hanging one. Lovely. That's foundation. It's the basement. Yeah, one. So one eight is. Uh, I do two. It's melancholy about they're not, I mean, so one is the channel of pure creativity. So it can be melancholy about being too weird, first of all, <laughs> being like too different, whatever, being, and then the eight part is more about platforming and it's often like um, melancholy about they're 
being not anything worth contributing or um, not having anything to share or nobody's got anything interesting to share or nobody's doing anything creatively novel. You know, they're like the, the experience of there being no good art in the world is one A, right? <laughs> like no one has ever made any good art. Every piece of art I've seen, like I don't like, like whatever, it's played out. <laughs> Phony. 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 <laughs> Did I already mention phoniness as a like universal individual Dead. theme? Good, good. Because I, because I, you know, I have my own chart and I have my own experience of it, and I have a channel that's very directly related to phoniness as a keynote. But just like with the whole, um, with the whole boredom thing being specifically sixty three, but then broadly, universally um, individual, phoniness is very sixty one twenty four. Because this is like the channel of like inner truth or whatever. And so every individual channel cares about authenticity and realness and stuff, but 6124 really, really cares about like people lying to themselves, mm. you know? So when I think about the universality of that, I'm filtering it through my like my own 6124 preoccupation with it. You're preoccupied with other people lying to themselves or if you were to lie to your own self? Um, both, yeah, again, so, and, so like I said, it's like part of the reason I wanted to have this was, uh, session on melancholy is because it's like when you know the melancholy channels that you have and you know the ones that are native to you and that you'll always have and that you can um, welcome, <clears throat> that you should always be ready to welcome, you can also differentiate your multiple melancholic channels if you have more than one. So for me, I usually just experience a mood as a mood, but like since doing all this differentiating work, like now I know whether it's a 3828 melancholy or a 6124 melancholy. And the big keynotes for me are like, am I in a mood because people are being honest and everyone's a liar and everything's fake? Or am I in a mood because nothing matters and nothing is meaningful and nothing is worth it? Very, very different moods when you know what you're feeling. You know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thirty-four fifty-seven. Oh, that's an interesting one. We had that universally activated like yesterday or the day before too. So integration circuitry is interesting. Ten twenty is also an integration channel. And yeah, and that's something I didn't touch on when we talked about ten twenty, but all the mutation that you're gonna see there with um with these integration channels is not going to be creative evolution which is how I introduced this topic. It's going to be adaptive survival evolution. Mm. So 3457 is like evolving your form because of a changing environment to make sure that you have the right level of energy and the right instincts at the right time. Like 3457s are the people um, who... Jonah has this good story. He talks about it in Myers-Briggs terms, but it's a good example of like what this, what the kind of thing this channel can do where like someone was driving a car and got into a car wreck and like while the car was flipping, like made eye contact with everyone in the car and knew how to flip it, knew how to land the car on its wheels again. <laughs> what the fuck is that, right? Yeah, that's did. integration circuitry. That's well, I like I flipped a car too. Huh? I flipped a car too. Damn. <laughs> yeah, well you can survive it. Like these oh, things might great. happen to you because you can handle it. Like 3457, you know, it applies to like other realms too. Like uh, the 3457 um can just know that someone is cheating on them, right? Mm -hmm. They just know that because they've got this empowered um, this empowered survival instinct to this like intuition, you know, gate 57 is called gate of the gentle because it chills you to your bone. You just know when you don't know how you know, but you know that something's happening. And so when you go around with that always activated, then you're just going to know shit that is threatening in any type of way, whether that's a car flipping or someone cheating on you, right? A threat is a threat. 3457 is the survivor. I would say of all the integration channels, because you see how being awake is an incredible asset for survival. Also, being uh, being awake yourself and being aware of who else is awake. Like you don't want to walk into a cave with a bunch of people that are sleepwalking, right? Mm -hmm. But thirty four fifty seven is like the actual application of power in the instant to the instant that demands it. 
Oh, and so anyway, so these kinds of melancholies that are like survival focused are not elaborating life through form, which is how I introduced the subject. They're just making sure that the form endures so that creative evolution can occur later. And so those, well, I mean, let's see what the keynotes for those gates individually are. Because one wonders, every keynote that we get for um, melancholy for an individual gate is going to apply to an integration channel and a pure individual channel. So it's like when they say that 57 is melancholy through hearing, that's kind of a weird one, or about 34, melancholy about not being able to use one's power right now. The question is, does that melancholy even occur through the 3457, or does that melancholy only occur through the 3410 or the 3420, which are, or not the 3420, but the 3410 is an actual like individual channel. So it's like, does is there melancholy attached to peer integration gates when they're used in an integration process? I actually don't really know about that because pe because of this weird like bundle of gates that people are just like kind of willing to all lump together. But the 34 can be three different things, depending on what channel it's in. Question? Uh, can you go back to 1-8? Sure. <laughs> what I else? forgot what, I think we got sidetracked, and I forgot what you said about it. Just uh, like quick rundown about the melancholy there. Uh, the melancholy, basically, like all art being bad, I don't have anything okay. interesting to make, nobody has anything interesting to make or to say, yeah. nobody has anything to contribute. What's new under the sun? Everyone's just rehashing the same whatever. Like, isn't... And uh, honestly, wanting to see a new face is very 1-8. What does that mean? Like, I'm just like, I've seen this per mm -hmm. I'm so used to seeing this person. I'm so used to seeing this type of person. I want, like, I want to, like, be interested in someone's face. Like, where's the face that I'm looking at that, like, I care about? You know? Like, where's the faces that I want to see that's, like, interesting to me? You said something about platform? Oh, yeah. Eight is the gate of the curator. It's the gate of platforming. So it's, you know, so there can be melancholy about, like, um, you know, this is too future for everybody. No one's going to recognize it. No one's going to understand this. Like, I actually can contribute something, but I'm contributing something for a world that doesn't exist yet, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's on board with this yet. Right, right, right. I know we've been over this several times, but with the hanging gates... Mm -hmm. And there's someone who has the corresponding mm -hmm. one to that when you're hanging around them. Mm -hmm. Can you say what that is again? An electromagnetic, it's called, generally. And what does that mean? So this is a much broader topic in human design, but regardless of what kind of circuitry this is, if you have half of a channel and someone else has the other half, this is what we call chemistry, colloquially. <laughs> you like each other. <laughs> and then you all might also hate each other because it's just like exciting. <laughs> so it's just like sometimes it's like the funnest thing in the world. And then sometimes it's just like, like oh man, you're so annoying and different. You know, like it's just like, boom, you're in, it's fireworks. It's always fireworks. Um, you're wired to be fascinated by it because whatever half you don't have, you're here to learn about. And so you are, you're geared up towards being willing to tune into it when you see it. So you're like, oh, interesting. Someone's got this going on. So I have a friend, we were just doing our charts and we complete like six channels together. Damn, that's a lot of <laughs> electrons. That's crazy. And you were friends first. We were friends first. And then we were like, ah, that makes so much sense. <laughs> Well, and, this, and then there's can be the other layer of, I don't remember, I think your um, single definition, but if you're split definition, my experience is that you're even more drawn to that because it like fills a necessary gap that, so on my own, I feel incomplete. And so the story I kind of run down through that is there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. If only I had the 36, if mm. only I had the 20. The 87. Mm. 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 What yeah. does split definition look like on the body graph? Mm. It means that they're... I'll show you on mine, but it means that there are um, different energy centers that um, don't, on their own, talk to each other. Uh, like, like, there's, like there's a white, there's a white, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I've got this party down here and this party up here. But this, because that's undefined, that makes you split? Because, yeah, in essence, but these four... Like it could all link up. So this energy is flowing this way, but it can't on its own reach up here. Oh, so it's not about that being undefined because if, if this 
if that was red all the way up there, then you would then you would be yep. single bit or not split. Right, and then you can also be triple split and quad split. So there's other people who have like four clusters or three <laughs> clusters. Just been a video so what that. makes single? Me, what the, what yeah. makes it single? Because these whatever is colored group. is all talking to each it's other. All talking. Okay. Yeah. So he had the party is not split. Oh, correct. And then yeah. what are the candy cane striped looking ones? It means you've got it both in the defined or the conscious side and the unconscious side. So you've got it double, double talked. And uh, triple splits don't really care about their bridges in the same way mm -hmm. that simple splits do. Quad splits kind of juries out. You hear mixed accounts of how these people feel about being bridged. But they feel good when they're bridged, though, wouldn't you say? I mean, they may not seek it directly. Well, any, well, any electro will feel to. good, but the point is that the electro that's a bridge and that isn't a bridge for the triple split basically feels the same. Sorry, right. I was distracted. Can you say that again? So any electro is going to feel good for anyone, and if you're a simple split and the electro is on your bridge, it feels like the best thing in the world. Got it. For a triple split, a bridge electro and a regular electro more or less feel the same, and a bridge electro will actually start to feel prohibitive and like Got walls it. are closing in on you if it's around for too long. Mm -hmm. Whereas the simple split will just feel complete, 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 complete. Mm -hmm. Oh, my person. Oh, my person. Oh, my person. Yay, yay. You know? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> And it's also not, it's it's also it depends on the person because my mom bridges both of my splits yeah and it wasn't a party yeah so it's it's specific to what that energy who that aura is or what it is it has to taste good to me it has to that's feel good. that's your differentiation that's you becoming wise through your openness and learning to discern the what what are your bridging gates twenty and thirty six. 30, yeah, so like learning to tell the healthy 36 from the unhealthy 36 mm -hmm. and learning which flavor of 36 hits you the best and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like when you're young, it's like, you know, you find a bridging gate electromagnetic and you'll take any version of that, you know, any bozo at the bar with that gate. That's how you get wisdom. Like, huh? That's how you get wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I assume I covered everything I want to cover. We can go to, through more uh, specific channels if people have them and are interested, but it's also been whew, about an hour, so. It's what, been what so feeling? good. It's really good. Yeah. Go. Are Thank we you. going into uh, the next one next week? Collective. Oh, I wasn't planning on it. I think Nami actually had something. Oh, you're doing something. Okay. Planned, yeah. It's planned. Good. Sweet. Yeah. Yay. Nami. Name. Name. Yeah. Yeah. Amy. Yeah. Tracking, um, tracking, tracking our reactions. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I have a fun song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, st before human design, I was a self-awareness coach. And so I've done a lot of work around, um, you know, when I get triggered or, when something gets touched in me, mm -hmm. what happens? And so I'm curious about using this. So the song, is, or the, the four quadrants are notice, name, navigate, and nourish. Mm -hmm. And so when I can notice that something's up, and then if I can put words to it, then I can be more conscious about where I'm navigating to, as opposed to if I'm on autopilot, I'm gonna go for the sugar, I'm gonna go for the whatever rather than, oh, I remember that when I have sugar, I feel like crap. So that's in the maybe non-human design realm. Um, but if we use that with, you know, human design elements, you know, of was I invited, was I not invited, mm -hmm. you know, projector or, or generator responding. And then nourish comes in because it feels good to nourish all the things that get touched. Because <laughs> this is also kind of similar to like parts work. We have like our inner kid, we have the rebel, we have all of that. So if we're notice name, noticing and then naming, oh, my little girl is really sad right now. So she wants a hug. And so if I can be conscious of the fact that she wants a hug, I'm less likely to go to the sugar or I'm less likely to go to the bar and pick up somebody or. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's so, I'm excited. Oh, cool. <laughs> I was just thinking out it'd be good to integrate more mm. um, types of modalities mm. with human design. Cool. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks for coming.